In World War I and World War II, the role of woman was important to make sure that life back in Britain stayed as normal as possible. They took up jobs in crew that were only available to men before the war. They were able to do things they had never done before, like driving a car as a railway porter or learning how to drive a tractor in the land army. Munition workers were called munitionettes and in crew they might have worked at the main munition factory in Radway Green. They worked in busy and loud factories, making bullets and bombshells packed with explosives to be used in the war. Most of the munitionettes were women, working 12 hours a day to make sure everything got done in time. The munition workers and crew would have only had 10 minutes to eat their lunch and go to the toilet. It's a very busy job. They might also have become a nursing crew, looking after all of the wounded soldiers. The Webb Orphanage became a Red Cross hospital in 1914 at the start of World War I, and the nurses had the job of cleaning the soldiers' wounds, helping with bandages and giving out medicine, as well as making sure they recovered well. They could have volunteered to join the Land Army too, Women worked hard in the fields growing most of the fruit and vegetables for Britain. It was an extremely important job because food was hard to be imported into Britain during the war. Most of the men who usually did this job had gone off to fight, so the government was always recruiting for more women to work on the land. They might have worked in Queen's Park, growing crops like onions and cucumbers, or on Micklewright's farm milking the cows and then delivering the milk to people all over crew. Women were paid less money for doing the same job as men. A woman would have received 28 shillings a week, compared to a man who might have received 38 shillings a week. But women were able to learn new skills they never had the opportunity to do before. Like learning to drive a tractor to plough the fields. Women would have also worked in the Rolls-Royce Shadow Factory, making the special Merlin engines to go into the Spitfire and Hurricane airplanes. It was called a Shadow Factory because it was a top secret operation rolled out by the government. They camouflaged the factory to look like houses so that it was less likely to be bombed. Women in the crew factory were also paid less than the men and at one point they went on strike and refused to work for two weeks until they were paid. Women might have also done different jobs in the factory, maybe making sure that the engines fit together or working on the plans for the engines. The engines they made were used in the aircraft, which took place in the Battle of Britain where Britain won. Women worked as railway porters at Crew Station 2 in World War II. They might move more heavy items across the station like parcels and trunks. They might have earned around five pounds a week, which was probably a lot more money than they would have made in another job. The only thing that women weren't allowed to do was drive the trains. They also had the important job of making sure that all the lights were turned off and the blinds were down on the trains during a blackout. This was when all lights had to be turned off to make sure that enemy planes flying above weren't able to recognise a moving train. You might have even been a railway engineer working in crew works to build the trains. Vera Jones worked for crew works during World War II when she was just 16 years old. She tells us more about what this was like. My name is Mrs Vera Jones. I was born in the village of Haslington near Crewe, Cheshire, on the 12th of February, 1925. 1941, I started into the railway works. 1941, September, and I was there till July, about July, 1946, in the railway works. I was employed as an apprentice fitter when I first walked in Nine Shop. I felt a bit afraid really because it was so dark when I walked in and to see these cranes, 50 tonne, two 50 tonne cranes going overhead carrying a locomotive, you know, it was a bit 
bit frightening at first really, but I, I soon got used to it. We had to work sometimes, we had to work till 8 o'clock at night. We had to work Sundays some, some weeks, but if we worked a Sunday we'd have a day off in the week. Us ladies, we, we got higher rate of pay than what the male apprentices got. Uh, but I, I think the reason was, was because when the war ended, they they could fin they would be finish us before finishing the the men. Uh, the conditions uh, we worked under well, it was very dirty, very dirty, and they were block floors and they were oily and greasy, and we worked in artificial light all day because the roof was blacked out with the war being on and. Our clothes smelt oily, really, when we went home, you know, through uh, working in them conditions. You could have also been involved in the dangerous job of being an air raid warden. It was their job to be the first person on the scene after a bomb, making sure that everyone was safe. They might have also run shelters and kitchens and crew for people who lost their house in the bombing. Crew had around 12 bombings, most of them taking place at night. An air raid warden would have played a key role in getting people to safety. They also had to walk around their designated area to make sure people had their blinds down during a blackout. They had to be very strict with planes flying overhead so that they didn't know they were flying past houses.